physician, made board certified in the specialties of neurology as well as sleep disorder medicine. I am a husband, father, a grandfather. I am a patient. I was cruising along running a private practice in the field of neurology as well as serving as medical director of a sleep lab in central Massachusetts. Almost two years ago, on May 4, 2012, it all came to a crashing end. I was diagnosed with cancer, aggressive malignant brain cancer. My story is well documented. Just Google my name, Mark Weiner, as Dana Farber, read my story, and see a picture of my beautiful family. And now, plus two more grandsons. People call my story compelling, inspiring. I just call it survival. I shouldn't be here today. Go and search the statistics of my diagnosis. Glioblastoma multiforme. The odds given to the last place Boston Red Sox in the spring training of 2013 to win the World Series were far, far better than the odds of my watching the Rolling Rally victory parade last fall. But I did not reach this point without suffering. In my practice, I treated disease, but I also focused much of my treatment on the symptoms of disease, pain, insomnia, hypersomnia, fatigue. Treatment options were frequently limited to medication, which had significant side effects, or worse, were addictive. How many patients I inherited who arrived at my office for a second opinion already addicted on narcotic pain medication, or suffering pain and sleep disorders trying to avoid addiction. Now I am the patient. No, I will not be here, but not for the care I received by my treating docs and their teens at Dana Farber, my darling wife, my wonderful family and friends. But I did not reach this point without suffering. During a year course of chemotherapy, the nausea was terrible. I lost about 20% of my body weight in just over a few weeks. I was so weak that I could not even lift a soup spoon. My wife cradled me in her arms like a baby to try to spoon feed me. Bad got worse. Not eating or drinking led to dehydration. More weakness, constipation, a trip to the ER I would not wish on my worst enemy. My doctors tried different concoctions of medication. Nothing touched me, except for the side effects. Just made things worse. If only there was something I could take that might work. Not medicine to cure me, just something to let me eat again. Let me just feel a little bit human again. Well, there is, medical marijuana. But it was not something I could consider. What was I supposed to do? Send my wife out at midnight to meet a criminal in a dark, dark, dark back alley? Making it out of the alley would have been the least of her problems. Then she would have to somehow make it home without being arrested. Not gonna happen. I'll suffer. And I did. Boy, did I. And if only I had something to give my patients to help relieve and avoid narcotic addiction, or at least decrease dosage. Well, there is something, medical marijuana. And as I understand it, obtaining medical marijuana for the sick is already supposed to be legal now. So why isn't it available? Is it politics? Have victims of illness fallen prey to political wrangling? The playing field is not level. Sick people cannot politic, cannot lobby. We're too sick. Do you know what kind of an effort it took me just to get here today? I almost didn't make it today. And this short trip into town and this meeting today will take me days to recover. So on behalf of all patients here today, on behalf of all patients who were too sick to be here today. On behalf of all patients. 
Mr. Governor, I implore you, I beg you, please allow us patients, us victims, the opportunity to live more comfortable lives, maybe even more productive lives, or at least allow us to try to suffer less. Please, please enable the opening of medical marijuana dispensaries without delay. Thank you.